Hi, chemistry students. Let's uh, extend upon our discussion of the change in temperature that occurs to, a, sol to a, a, a solvent when we add some kind of solute to it. So uh, we call this boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Let's look specifically, just as an, as an example, for uh, the freezing point depression. And here's our equation that we uh, saw in class. What we're going to do is we're going to take the molality and actually write it out. It's the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And normally when we see an equation like this, we always think that our goal is to find this. However, it may not be that uh, finding the change in temperature is what's so important because this is such an easy thing to actually measure. What we may be interested in finding is something like the moles of the solute. You might wonder, why would anyone care about the moles of the solute? Well, if I know the moles of the solute, and I, have, and I happen to know how many grams of that stuff I put into my solution, then I'm going to have my grams and my moles, and that's going to give me a way to find the molecular mass, because that's what the molecular mass is. It's the grams and that many moles in that gram. So the idea is we can measure the kilograms of the solvent. We know this constant, the freezing point depression constant, and we can measure this with the thermometer, the temperature change. So if we measure all those, we can easily obtain a mo um, the number of moles of solid. So let's rearrange this real quick and then do an example. So the change in temperature is equal to the Kf times the moles of solute, which is what we want to find, divided by the kilograms of solvent. So if we rearrange that, we get the moles of solute is equal to the change in temperature times the mass of the solvent in kilograms divided by this Kf. Fantastic. So let's put that to use real quick in an example problem and see how we can find the molecular mass. Okay, so here's the typical problem you're going to see um, where you might put in some known amount that you measure out, 95.377 grams in this case, are going to be dissolved into 125 grams of water. Uh, at this point, then, we can measure the freezing point, and it turns out that it's at negative 4.15 degrees C. That means our delta T is equal to 4.15 degrees C. And if we take our equation from before, we can find the number of moles of solute real easy. So the number of moles of solute is equal to, is equal to the change in temperature times the mass of our solute in, or solvents in kilograms, all divided by our K sub F. Our K sub F is given to us, or it should be for the problem. So for water, it's 1.86 degrees C for every molal of, uh, that we have of, 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 our solvent, of our solution. So we put in our, our values, 4.15 degrees C times our kilogram of our solvent, which is 0.125 uh, kilograms. We divide by the 1.86. And I obtain 0 0.2789 moles of this substance at that time. Now, we know now the number of moles. We also know the number of grams that gave us that number of moles. So the molecular mass is pretty straightforward. It's 95.377 grams of this substance, and that substance also contains 0.2789 moles. If I do this math, and this calculation gives us 341.9 AMUs, or grams per mole. We can compare that then to our four example uh, or possibilities that might be in our, our, our shelf there that we would have used, and we see that sucrose, that 342 AMUs, matches very well, and so our substance could possibly be sucrose. Other tests would need to be done because there are other substances with approximately 342 AMUs as its molecular mass. So we'd have to do some more experiments, but this is a start. So there you go, just another type of uh, a problem we can do with the uh, colligative properties.